Michael Jordan, Pharrell Williams, Cristiano Ronaldo. All of these legends have one thing in common, ego. I just watched the first episode of Blue Lock and its central philosophy completely shifted my mindset. It made me realize why me and everyone watching this video needs an ego. You need an ego because if you don't believe deep down that you deserve and are worthy of the things you desire, you won't put in the work to achieve them. Self-sabotage, procrastination, and even self-hatred aren't the results of laziness. They're the results of a lack of ego. This video explains the philosophy of Blue Lock and how you can use it to shift your mindset and change your life. But first, some context on the show. Yoichi Isagi is a second year high school student who loves soccer and dreams of one day playing for the Japanese national team and winning the Soccer World Cup. He is then selected to go to a camp where the top 300 high school players, who all play in the forward position, will compete for a chance to become the greatest striker that Japan has ever seen. Ryosuke Kira is Isagi's only friend and is placed in the same group as him. The program is run by a man named Jinpachi Igo, who believes that the only way a striker can be the best at his position is if he has a gigantic ego and is an egoist. An egoist is essentially someone who always puts themselves first, no matter what. Of the 300 players selected, only the top 5 will remain and will be given a chance to play at the Under-20 World Cup. The final catch is that if you are eliminated from this camp, you will never be allowed to play for the national team. Anyone who loses while here at Blue Lock will forfeit the right to ever represent Japan. So it's a high stakes, high reward situation. Oh, and I forgot to mention that all these players were ranked when they got in. And Isagi's rank was 299, the second lowest of the whole group. The first elimination game is a game of tag where the lowest person in the group is it and simply has to kick the ball into someone else. The players have just over one minute to play and if you are it when the clock runs out, you are eliminated. Simple enough. The game starts in a frenzy as the person who is it tries to kick the ball into someone and the other players run away hoping they don't become it. As the game progresses, Isagi gets the ball with seconds left on the clock. Eager to make it through, he targets the only player ranked lower than him, who eventually sprains his ankle and can't move. At this point, all Isagi has to do is kick the ball and it will make the lowest ranked player it. But at this point he does something completely unexpected. He realizes that if he is going to become the best in the world one day, he's not going to do it by playing it safe and only going off to people that he is better than. If he is going to be the best, he has to compete with the best and win. In order to change, I have to be something I'm not. I came here to turn things around, to become the best in the world. Unless I beat someone stronger than me, that won't happen. So with that realization, Isagi turns around and attacks the highest ranked player in the room, his only friend at the camp, Ryosuke Kira. Isagi kicks the ball at Kira, making him it, eliminating him and ensuring that he will never get to play for the national team. This moment from this single episode completely shifted my mindset and my opinion on the value of an ego. If there are winners, there must also be losers. Making my dream come true means ending someone else's, no getting around it. What exactly is an ego though? To me, an ego is simply a subconscious belief that you have in your ability to do something. It's a belief that if you work hard and push yourself, you can achieve your dreams, desires and aspirations, even if you don't currently possess the capabilities to do so. It's a heightened sense of self. Ego shouldn't be confused with entitlement, which is the belief that you are owed your dreams. A man with a big ego goes after what he wants with full force and unshakable resilience, while a man who is entitled crosses his fingers and waits for his dreams to magically appear in his life. When they don't, instead of figuring out why and taking steps to improve, he sits around and complains. Now there are two kinds of ego, the external and the internal. If you believe in yourself because other people have told you how great you are, your ego is big but extremely fragile. At the slightest hiccup, it will break and you will lose all your confidence. All it takes is someone telling you that you're not that great or someone beating you at your own game and poof. All that self-belief turns into self-doubt. You see it all the time 
when a super talented athlete, who was always leagues above his competition, goes to the next level, and after taking losses or realizing that his natural talent isn't enough to win, he crumbles into nothing. Or a huge up-and-coming musician, whose first hit single cements him into the scene, but after receiving harsh criticism for an album, he hides behind how much money he has, the girls he dates, and other status symbols, instead of trying to listen to the critics, understand the feedback, and come back with a much harder, more authentic project. People like this have external egos and can only see themselves as great when they're looking through other people's eyes. Then there are those with the internal egos, the people who regardless of whether or not people believe in them, will fight to improve and win at all costs, even if it means putting themselves before the team. Isagi gave us an example of this in the moment when he decided to go after the top ranked player. But let me give you a real world example of a selfish egoist in action. It's the 3rd of December 2005, and the Los Angeles Lakers trail by one point against the Bobcats. There are six seconds left on the clock, and the team has a timeout to decide what they will do to win the game. The coach is drawing up plays during the team talk, but as he does this, the late, great, and legendary Kobe Bryant grabs the whiteboard, tosses it to the side, and says to the team, if you want to be a part of history, get me the ball. With that, Lamar Odom says he wants to be a part of history, passes the ball to Kobe with five seconds to play, and Kobe wins the game. Near mid -court. Five seconds remaining. Working off the dribble. Pump the Lakers score with Kobe again. 0.9 seconds remaining. A perfect example of an egoist putting himself before the team. Let me give you an example of the opposite. It's 2020, game five of the NBA Finals, and the legendary LeBron James gets the ball. With only a few seconds of the game left, LeBron drives towards the hoop and jumps as if he's about to score, and four players from the opposition try to stop him. But of course, he's LeBron James. And if he wanted to, he could still score himself and win the championship for his team. But unlike Kobe, LeBron chooses not to be an egoist and passes the ball at the last moment to Danny Green, who has plenty of time to make a wide open three-point shot to win the game. Mind you, Danny Green is on this team because he specializes in three-point shots. Green catches the ball, and this happens. He drives down the lane, back out to Green. Green for three! Off the mark, no good! Marquis Morris has it, throws it inside and throws it out of bounds! Now even though it looks like I'm criticizing LeBron, I fully believe that he did the right thing. He made the smartest play in order to win the game and put his ego to the side, whereas Kobe did the opposite and put the fate of his entire team on his back choosing to win the game himself. This is the mentality of a true egoist. Now of course there are instances where you shouldn't be an egoist like Jinpachi says, but when it comes to what you truly want and desire, you should develop an unshakable belief that if you work hard enough and smart enough, you can achieve what you want, even if it means destroying all of those in your way in the process. If you don't develop this heightened sense of self and this intense internal ego, then you will always fall short of what you really want simply because deep down, you don't believe that you deserve it. So you don't even try. How do you become an egoist? Simple. Tell yourself over and over again that you deserve it and that you're worthy of the heights that you aim to reach. And then work like hell to achieve it and validate that belief. As the great Mike Tyson says, delusion is only delusional when you don't accomplish the goals of making your delusion a reality. I made a short with a quiz that will test how much of an egoist you are if you want to see it, check out the shorts on my channel. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing for more. Have a nice day.